we all going to be visible? Yeah, just to inform everyone, Nikta, that you're going live right now. Hello, Miss Lena. I'm just asking, are we all visible all the time? We are all live now, Miss Lena. Oh, we are? <laughs> yes. yes. Here we are for yes. Facebook Live number four. Uh, and today you don't have to just make do with my face. You've got three beautiful faces that have joined mm -hmm. us for Facebook Live number four. So uh, everyone who's watching us, there's a, there's a saying that resonates deeply within me and I've, uh, my, my team have heard me say it very often and, and it's, it's simply this, this that um, a dream can turn into dust or magic depending on the magic that rubs against it. So, or the talent that rubs against it, sorry. And I'm so excited to introduce you to three magicians um, that make learning come alive at Kangaroo Kids and Billabong High. So, um, um, one, two, three, I don't, I'm not sure if you can see all four of us because it's going to be a new way uh, forward for me, but uh, the one you're seeing right now, uh, the young and effervescent, um, <laughs> Lightweight category uh, boxer com uh, contestant is Divya Punjabi. Uh, mm -hmm. She she's lightweight, uh, but only in weight. Uh, her brain is very very heavy and very very charged. Um, she I know she only looks like she's thirty years old, um, but uh, she's actually been with me for twenty five years. We've worked together, and so you know now that I like to catch him young, as young as five years old. So Divya has worked across all departments in uh, Kangaroo Kids and Billabong High, and she's got the highest possible title I could ever bestow on any, anyone, and that's culture custodian. Um, she's worked across every single department, and currently she works uh, very much with the instructional design of Skippy Ted, Billabox, um, and all the instructional design work that goes out to schools. Um, her team crafts all the beautiful recipes that then get handed over to the teachers to make these delicious learning experiences come alive for all our kids. So that's Divya for you. And Divya and I have worked for 25 years together. So we're more than our silver jubilee. Next, I'd like to introduce you to Madhu Tiwari. Uh, Madhu is a fabulous leader at uh, Billabong High Vadodra. And uh, she's someone we just could not do without um, at that end of the world. She's been with the school almost since it started. And uh, she's looked on as a friend, philosopher, and guide by her entire team of teachers. Um, she's ever smiling. She's ever creative. She's ever vibrant. And um, there we have Madhu, completely infectious, her smile, her laugh, her energy. Thank you. Last but not least, uh, we have a very dynamic and proactive principal of Billabong High Santa Cruz. Um, collectively, I have worked with uh, with, uh, with Nikhat for four years, and four years. yeah, and it's been such an absolute pleasure, Nikhat. Um, she's loved by teachers, she's loved by parents, she's loved by students. Um, Nikhat actually makes our school come alive in Santa Cruz, and she has not blinked once since the lockdown, and that's why I am so admirable for the proactiveness and uh, the great leadership she's shown. Um, the pictures and videos and testimonials that she posts on our leadership group from parents uh, are testimony to the fact that Nikhat will not let learning be locked down. She has shown such imagination and innovation and has risen to every challenge that this time could have needed. So. We will start the session with those uh, with those introductions. If any of you uh, parents, teachers watching, if you've got any questions, follow up uh, questions to something that we've spoken about or anything specific you'd like to ask, please post them in the comment section. As usual, we've got Priyanka who will collate them and send them to us on our phones. And please uh, specify if there's one of us in particular you would like to have answered the question. So I will start. Um, can may I start with you, Nikat? Yes, please. Yes, okay. Ms. Lina. Nikhat, uh, just tell me a little bit about how your teachers have catered to this time, uh, you know, about through the holistic development. So physically, emotionally, cognitively, um, how have they dealt with development across all the domains? And uh, can you, you know, kind of share with us any exciting specific examples that explain these three areas of development and how your teachers have engaged with our students? So our children were in a lockdown for a week and that's when we decided that this is something that cannot uh, be uh, taken in and we need to do something about it. And within a week's time, we went online. We started with a virtual class 
And I think this was the first step that we took to ensure the emotional well-being of the children. Because when we started with the classes, the children could feel the connect with the children, with the peers again, with the teachers again. They could interact with each other. They could feel a kind of a normal situation coming back into their life. So that was the first step of taking care of their emotional well-being. Post that, then we had a lot of uh, counseling sessions by the COW team. We had our life skill sessions that we have been going on. In each and every lesson of ours, a session of ours, our children have been, our teachers have been incorporating a lot of elements which have to do with the current pandemic, the situation that, that we are in. I'll give you an example. In the primary section, we have, in one of the sessions, we had a gratitude chain that we did. So each child was made to write a small note of thank, uh, a thank you note of, or whatever the child is grateful for along with the parents. So it was a very collaborative session. The parents were on the same platform along with the children. And each one wrote a nice small note of being grateful for what in this lockdown situation and formed a nice chain and then showcased it to everyone, all of us. So this entire bonding which has happened has really helped the children to, uh, they take, to develop their emotional development. And physical, we realize that it cannot always be academics. We need to give the children have been locked down. They have been staying in a very cramped and constrained environment. We need to make them move around. And that's when we brought in the PE sessions. We have yoga sessions happening. Then we also decided that it's time that we have our sports and performing arts happening, going virtual as well. And with dance and the martial arts, which is capoeira and the other sports activities, which are part of our school curriculum, the children have been exposed to a lot of physical activity as well. So their physical energies are also being taken care of. We all understand that there are limitations to what we can do sitting at home, even if it's physical activity, but then the children are moving under guided, kind of monitored environment, under guided instructions, and they are happy. They're seeing each other doing uh, different poses and they're very happy to feel that connect. So they're doing really well. Now, cognitively, as we say, the academics has really bloomed. It has really gone off well. But cognitive development, we understand, is not only about, uh, in about academics. So we, in spite of being online virtual classes, we have had research being done by the children, the projects being done at home, and then projected and presented to the entire class virtually. We have had a lot of, uh, well, how do you say, presentation by the children. So that we have had student-led classrooms. Instead of teacher leading the entire class, we have had student-led classrooms. Our grade four children also did not stop uh, anywhere, and they went on to do the publishing module, which, the, which comes in from the curriculum team. And, and how do now, the question was, how do they interact with the teachers? So that's when we had the email access being given to the teachers, and they started writing emails, sharing the designs that they have come across to publish the book, the, the drawings that they have come up with, the storyline that they have come up with, and in the entire process, they also learned how to write a good email, how to address each other, how to address the teacher, how to take a feedback, and then revert and respond to the feedback. It's been a great learning journey. And I think with all that we have been doing, our children have really developed holistically and we have been able to take care of them. Wonderful. So a couple of things, you know, Wonderful. parents who are watching who don't understand the power of gratitude, every time you're grateful, it releases great chemicals in the, uh, in the, in the body and it lowers stress and it, it builds immunity. So that's a wonderful thing uh, you've been doing. Uh, Madhu, you have anything to add? Uh, no, I think she has covered most of the points. Okay. Uh, Madhu, we all know that our kangaroo kids children, the young ones, are the ones who are the most confused ones because obviously they can't express themselves. I did watch one of the videos where I had this, I saw this child standing at the door wearing uniform with the bag and wanting to go to school. So how are the teachers dealing with this emotional state of the children where they are feeling they are all uh, by themselves at home without meeting their peers? Yeah, actually, uh, before the lockdown, what we, I mean, we were not knowing about it. So it was very ever up. They could not meet their ex teacher even. So what we did before we started our virtual uh, learning, teaching learning process, we had an interaction session with the ex teacher first. Because they should not be, you know, they should have a proper goodbye by the ex-teacher first. So first we did that and we started, then we started coming uh, to the virtual platform. In that platform, we tried to have more and more joyful interaction with the teachers. And, you know, 
calling out their names hi hello so in the beginning it was more of joyful interaction with the teachers and calling out uh, by either giving a customized touch to them asking their names and then uh, gradually after a week what i saw that they started mixing and gelling with their peers also especially in junior kg and senior kg class they started waving hands and hi hello everybody hi everything so this is how this uh, this class this uh, emotional development was taken care of and we they can't come to our houses but our teachers they started recording their voices and making videos of poems rhymes and songs and we started sending it to the parents so this is how we started we build up the emotions and the bond with the teacher so you almost had like a virtual circle time every morning yes. very nice uh, interesting it's, it's it's not easy to bridge that gap but we are trying our level yeah. best to do that sure so all four of you um uh demonstrating all four of us have constantly demonstrated a great uh, learning uh, mindset and a growth mindset um, and of, of obviously yes. whenever i've selected anyone to join the team it's first keeping that in mind that will this person have a growth mindset or a fixed mindset uh, nikhat can you uh, tell us about a little bit about how this has helped your teachers and you to adapt at this time so i would say each one of us have showcased a tremendous growth mindset and the learning mindset uh, we have otherwise we wouldn't have been able to go virtual because initially to overcome the hiccups the technical glitches the fear of facing a camera and being exposed to the parents and to the children and back home to everyone we had to overcome a lot of challenges initially and this was only because that we had this kind of a growth set that it's fine it's okay we'll take the steps and we are not there to succeed at succeed at all times we are not trying to be perfect but we are trying to do something we are trying to trying to take the baby steps that will lead us definitely to success so with this positive attitude we went ahead and once all the teachers and it is amazing it was really amazing to see how uh, just a couple of teachers who were tech savvy could handhold the entire staff collaborate with them show them how to go about presenting their content show them about how to even create a zoom link for that matter so it's been a great learning uh, journey for all of us and once we mastered the entire zoom session there was no stopping us then we went ahead to do our culminatings virtually which is performances of their understanding we went ahead to and divya was a part of our culminating programs we had invited her to see how our children had been performing we also had a graduation day for grade 4 children where you know they were given the certificates and the eat the class teachers spoke about the child's attributes uh, and it was a very heartwarming session because now the children were moving from primary to or middle school section so we didn't stop there as well then we decided that it was time we connected with the parents more and we we gave them a download about the child's performance of the entire year so we had a ptm virtual ptm happening there we went ahead and did a psychometric testing for the high school children and the career counseling one on one so all this we really did which was greatly appreciated the parents were very happy the children were extremely appreciative and i think this is a proof of our growth mindset and the learning mindset which our teachers have shown so it's been really amazing that you know what a mindset can actually make us do i think it's einstein who said it's not the intelligent it's the most intelligent of the species but the most adaptable that will continue to grow and thrive so nikita i'm really happy to hear you you've done so many things yeah. our teachers have been really hands on on everything and there's never been a no or what or if how will we do this why do you expect us to do this and how will we go about it it was always taken up so beautifully and executed in a much more excellent manner than what even i had foreseen so it was really amazing to see the children perform i would like to show you a uh, Uh, an image of a child dressed up as a rainforest and uh, here you will see that the child is dressed up as a rainforest and also explaining the different levels of the rainforest in africa can you see this uh, yes yeah, yeah yeah we can so this is just one glimpse of what our culminating activity was all about it was really beautiful and the children did not stop anywhere they they really ensured that whatever resources they had at home they dressed up for their part they prepared ppt and they were all there and we the teachers it was great it, it should be appreciated that the teachers went all out to collate each and every child's videos and audios which were coming in and make them into a good video and showcase it to the parents very heartwarming to see our grandparents also sitting by home and the entire show so it was i think it was all a learning mindset that you know 
uh, that is also the USP of uh, Billabong and group of schools and KKL organization as an organization, which helps us and which helps us to grow in a very similar fashion in sync. I think it's amazing. Fabulous, fabulous. Madhu, uh, how much do you think the instructional design helped you to deliver the uh, in the classrooms? And if you can give a couple of examples that, you know, that did that process help you? Yeah, uh, what I like about the system here that uh, the beautiful structured curriculum was in place. So all of us are groomed and conditioned with that curriculum. So that battle we are not going to fight. The, our battle was how to replace with different resources because that was not available. So the curriculum, the, we were all conditioned. It's in the place, uh, the hands-on activities, application-based activities, that's the beauty. And then we started brainstorming how to replace with the resources which is available in the surroundings. So our main uh, struggle was to look for resources available. Uh, example, I can say like uh, in senior KG, they have vertebrate, invertebrates animals. Now yeah. every kid has a you know, bunch of animals that with themselves. So we- Madhu, Madhu can, you take the, can you take the speaker close to your- yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. now better? So, yeah, much better. Uh, yeah, so the structure is beautifully designed for us. So we are not now reinventing it. Our, what is our job next is to look for the resources. Now the moment we realize, okay, now virtual platform, what we are supposed to do, look for the resources because curriculum in place. Now, for, for example, I would say like they have vertebrate invertebrate animals in senior KG class. Everybody has a bunch of animals at home. We spoke about it and then the kids, they brought their animals and they started classifying as per vertebrates and invertebrate animals. Teacher, nursery teacher introduced colors and teacher, children were told to go and get red color and they were all rushing towards the different rooms and getting a red color and showing it to us so uh, it was very i mean very thrilling moment and a very exciting moment for the children and for the teachers to see how it is working now because even we had not thought you know how would it come up i mean after this uh, this virtual class when we started even we were not knowing how it will look like but it was uh, it went off very well i mean till date okay so, so that's what madhu said yeah Divya. Yeah. Yes. No, it was more like a show and tell that she was doing. Yeah, great. Continue. Yeah, so to add to what Madhu said, I think the instructional design through Billabox also helped us a lot because that was something that we were able to, though we were struggling with the, initially with the first week of understanding how to go live on Zoom and all that, we had a content also ready, which also gave us some hands-on activities, which we didn't have to think of, which could be easily adapted to a virtual platform. We had a lot of video as resources on the Billabox platform, which we could, uh, you know, we, we could adapt and we could use for our sessions there. And the entire curriculum has been designed in such a manner, I would say that it caters to each and every child, every, every child's needs. So irrespective of what the learning style is, it caters to everyone. And that was very beautiful. And that helped us. In fact, when we went virtual, that was more of a help to us there because then every child could be seen and making the best and the maximum use of the resources that we could share it with them. And like Madhu said, if we had one session on maths, which was on shapes and tessellation, and it was more like a show and tell and a treasure hand. So yeah. they ran all around the house. They were trying to find shapes and tessellation in a curtain on the draperies everywhere else. So I think that the, the instructional design that we have in place and the kind of brainstorming that we do before we execute everything is really very helpful. And it, it that so, is, I suppose, that is the reason why we have been so successful in our virtual classrooms. So, so look at that. Uh, uh, name a few things that, you know, have completely um, blown you away, like really amazed you when you popped into any of your virtual classrooms. Ms. Leah, there have been a couple of instances like <laughs> this, but uh, my heart actually goes out to those children with differential needs. So we have this child in grade five, and I walked into the classroom literally I could see a child who otherwise was always accompanied with a shadow teacher, refused to look up and meet the eye, whether it is the teacher or the peer, and all by herself, all by, you know, without any interaction with anyone else. And if there is no shadow teacher, she wouldn't know how to go about it, you know. She would just be there in the classroom without being an active participant. But when I walked into this grade five session, I actually saw her presenting water scarcity to the entire class. And that really was amazing. It really touched my heart. And I would say the same thing has happened with another child in the primary. 
who when I walked into that class was again presenting a topic to the entire class and talking and in fact very enthusiastic and, and interactive, wanted to say so many things, was trying to raise the hand and wanting to be very engaged and interactive. And I think that has really amazed me. It's been beautiful. If I can, if you can give me a minute, I'll try to showcase, present to you the video of Hia from grade five who presented a small little content on water scarcity. I think it was really heartwarming. I'll just try my level best, Miss Lena, to showcase that. Give me a minute. Yeah, that's Hia. Yeah, this is Hia, yes. So yeah, this is Hia. Audible, at times if the video is not audible, you will get to see her talk at least. So she's here from grade five. She's gone, wait. Let me just give me a try. I'll just try it out again. This is what technology and going virtual has taught us to be very patient, <laughs> not lose the cool and keep going and keep looking for what you want. So I'll look out for here somewhere here and I'm sure we'll be able to get her. Um, no, unfortunately, if I get her somewhere at the end of it, I think the video is gone. Yeah. Here it is, here it is, if you can just see this. Yeah, can you see this, Ms. Lena and Divya? Yeah, yeah, we can. I can see here. Yeah. Wow. Is she, is she normally a shy child? She's a very shy child. She refuses to look up, she refuses to meet your eye, talk to you. So you acknowledge think, your presence you think and she's only work? comfortable with the uh, shadow teacher around her and she has to be constantly guided when she's in a classroom situation. So it, it's amazing when you see the independence that the child has gained and uh, what the virtual schooling has done to her. It's beautiful. You see she's presenting all by herself without any help anywhere. Do you and, think, uh, uh, do you think she'll prob she probably feels um, less vulnerable because she's not surrounded by people? She yes, she and many, many more children like her, they are less, they feel uh, less vulnerable and there are many children who get easily distracted because of the, uh, some of them are on the auto, are autistic children in our school, so they get distracted, they get very disturbed by the kind of noise level which is in a classroom otherwise, and they feel very pressured. So this has given them a very, a very comfortable way of uh, they are connected, but still they are not connected. They feel I've heard, I've heard from a lot of teachers that actually what takes uh, 50 minutes to complete, online takes like 20 minutes to complete because all the classroom behavior problems are not there. <laughs> so it's more disciplined, though it, I will still want to say it's very interactive. In spite of being interactive, it is the rules are set at the start of the session, which disciplines in them in such a manner. And then they have nobody else to uh, sitting next to them to nudge them and to distract them from what the teacher is trying to facilitate. Hmm. So it, it goes on more smoothly, I would say. And yeah, because I saw one of Prisha teacher's session and uh, yes. Lina and Madhu. So the, because you have the mute button with you, so you're giving chance, you have like who is raising the hand. So the classroom management was very, very effectively done. Uh, Madhu, coming back to you is one thing I want to tell you is that once you get Skippy Tech, which goes, you will get a lot more content also for the kids. Can you tell me uh, two or three things that have been very endearing that the children have been speaking about when you have gone into the Zoom sessions? Uh, first of all, I like the way they describe this as laptop class. They call it laptop class. So, you know, this was first uh, first time when I heard, oh, it's really a laptop class. So this was something new for me. And um, yes, we had a session wherein it was cooking session. So wherein uh, they were supposed to make something out of whatever resources available at home, uh, bread or chapati and roti, whatever. And they had a cooking session along with the teacher with instructions followed and they decorated it so well. And then the music was played behind and they all had, you know, uh, that party together. So there was some Something very pleasing for me when I entered. Oh my God! Thirty screens and everybody is having some nice, you know, uh, water mouth watering uh, delicacies with themselves, and they were eating together with the teacher. This was very nice for. I mean, I feel felt so bad, uh, good about it. And uh, secondly, then they have dress up day, wherein they dressed up like uh, pandas, dressed up like tiger, and uh, it was very amazing to see which we had never expected that thirty children or twenty five children sitting and dressed up like uh, tiger and pandas and talking about it. So, so it was very uh, nice feeling and very excited. I mean, we were very excited for that. So I had the opportunity to see Kajal's session. And I think the hmm. most endearing thing I heard one child say, asking the teacher, 
can you come to my house yes even we had this yeah. problem we had one child said we can't come to your house but you can yeah, come to our can house. Come to my house and one more thing uh, that was really uh, i mean we were finding it so difficult to explain to that child what he realized that all of them have gone to teacher's place because when they saw the small small windows they were assuming that all of them have gone to teacher's place and i have not gone there oh. so we have were trying it hard to explain to the child that no everybody is there they are to their respective they homes are. all of us and you are also there so we are not somewhere in one place so that was something in the first week later they realized it and they were coping it very well so uh, interesting have you seen a transition uh, um, um, in the way um parents are viewing uh, technology for learning have you seen a shift in you know in in how how you think parents will continue to embrace uh, uh, the use of technology for learning is it for me If either of you <laughs> okay mm. so uh, what i have realized the first work week was not very good i would not i would be very honest with that but then from second week onwards things were uh, smoother and uh, that was really surprising for me when the children they started following the instruction of muting and muting by themselves that was really amazing for me especially for senior kg and junior kg classes uh, handling their your phone sitting tolerance increased and they adapted it very well i always say adaptation of children are much 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 better than all of us adults so it, with respect to technology also they adapted it very quickly and uh, i this is the best platform when i can say in virtual language we say thumbs up to all the parents for their cooperation throughout the session for this one month uh, because without their uh, uh, cooperation we wouldn't have been you know we couldn't have done this so beautifully and seamlessly yeah so further to what uh, madhu said i would also like to add that the parents have actually accepted the uh, the use of technology in education very beautifully and not only the parents but students and teachers as well so technology has always been a part of our education system for many years and but we have always been hearing about it that digital education digital learning is the future and but we didn't ever think that we would be the future for for <laughs> digital education but it really happened it opened horizons i should say it opened our eyes to the vastness of technology and its use in education it opened our eyes to the fact that school can be looked at a different from a different perspective as well it could we could have a beautiful blended approach wherein we can have traditional school or on a physical school as well as virtual and there are so many things that that can be that can add value to the entire education system and the process so i think parents have also beautifully embraced it and accepted it otherwise if they would not have we wouldn't have met with the success because they have had to share their time they have had to share their energy they have had to share the device with the children and ensure that the children are a part of the entire learning process and it's it's been a beautiful journey i keep saying that well lovely so uh, uh let me ask you something uh nikith has you know the the we, when we design the process of uh, the instructional design we want it to be integrated so interdisciplinary how right. has has the spirit of this integration translated well in the virtual world so everything that we have been doing in the school you know in physical space we have we are doing virtually this yeah. haven't you know brought in onto the virtual platform as well i'll quickly give you a few examples of the sessions that we have had where they where we have seen a lot of integration one is where literature like james and the uh, james and legend yeah has been integrated with language where the children have to write a report again integrated with science because the report writing is on insect then we have had a library session where the children have read a book and then the characters get the they draw the characters that they have they are inspired with then we have had a lot of history as well like the history of the travel of marco polo was again integrated with english language wherein the children had to write a report if i get a picture i can quickly share the uh, marco polo which they had written a report writing on here can we see this no, we no. can't see that we can't see that i'll have to i'll quickly again go and share it with us so we and then while i i share the screen with you and show you the travels how the travel of marco polo was integrated with uh, 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 with the english language by writing a report i will also take this time to tell you that we had uh, uh, the best 
example of share in sharing would be now it would be the COVID project which the curriculum team has you know shared with us the kindness journal that we are writing. So the COVID project is this is the the report writing on travel of Marco Polo. So this was an integration of history along with uh, English language. And the COVID journal which the children are now working on, which has been designed and crafted by the curriculum team. And Divya has been a, a, a major influencer there. Lina, Lina. <laughs> it's integrated, so English, it's integrated with English, with science, with technology, with history, and you name it, each and every subject is integrated. And the children are going through the entire process virtually with the teachers, as well as doing the projects back home. So integration and cross-disciplinary has been the, uh, the way, the style of education in Willabong schools. And we have continued with the same format. We, we're not teaching any subject in isolation. Wonderful. Uh, Madhu, what about in the preschool? Since there's so much of active learning, which is hands-on, how have you been able to achieve that? If you can give us some examples. Yes, when I, I go back to the, uh, the approach of teaching and the process of teaching that is always enjoyed, but that's more important. And uh, that is always intact. We can't, you know, dilute it. So uh, even we have like a water cycle topic that rains, we're talking about rain. So water cycle experiment was done. Then they had songs on water, the rains. Then they had art and craft for rains. Then they have puppet show something related to rains and uh, thunder and all. So all these subjects were integrated with the same topic and a uh, lot of hands-on experiences because what we realized after a week that uh, children were very, uh, the sitting tolerance increased when we were doing more of activities with the children. Uh, in in the class, they were able to listen to you. But in the in the in the, in the virtual classroom, uh, they were more engaged and happy when we were conducting some activities. So activities like your different experiments and uh, you know uh, art activities, craft activities, different activities were conducted with the children. All I mean, as per the plan. Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing one of the uh, special days. I think Jigna Malat School did where we had inventions where we had this is that the grandmother talks about the past and the present yes, and yes. they did it virtually and we saw the resource, uh, as a resource person. very 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 well done very well done so anybody who's uh, ever worked with me knows that i'm not a fan of the board exams <laughs> i believe uh, they do more harm to our kids than uh, help our kids in any way and I've also not been a big fan of outcomes testing. Um, uh, as you know, we've introduced one grade up because my whole uh, endeavor for kids is that kids should, should be able to reach the level that they want to reach multiple times and not that one, um, you know, that, that one piece of paper and pen test that they go through. Um, so I'm, I'm, I've always been more a fan of the process of learning being honored rather than the, um, the testing of the outcome. And I know that, uh, you know, our kids haven't been, uh, you know, they're not doing the formal tests at the moment. Um, Nika, do you think that kids have gained anything by us not testing them at the moment? So, uh, Lina, I would like to tell you that we carry our philosophy and we ensure that uh, we try to assess them. The assessment hasn't happened. Assessment was basically not there for the primary till grade five. It's for grade six onwards. And they have... I would say they've lost out on anything of assessment on uh, because of assessment not being conducted. In fact, even the teachers have also not lost out on anything because every session that we are doing is followed up. Every concept that we uh, we share with the children, we facilitate learning, is followed up with quizzes, memory games created by the children themselves. The culminating is where they have showcased their performances of their understanding. And the question and answer, which happens on, uh, on in a very interactive manner, where the teacher throws the questions at the children and the children answer, or the children ask the question to the other, to their peers, and then they get an answer. All this has been a part of the assessment process. It, this all gives us a very fair glimpse of how the learning has happened. So I wouldn't say that they have lost out of, on anything. And hence, we were not paranoid when we realized that because of the lag lockdown, we will not be able to take an assessment or understand how to go about creating a child because we were very confident about the teaching learning process that we have had in the physical space as well as virtual. And we had enough opportunities to engage in activities which indirectly or directly reflected their learning. So the assessment, a formative assessment, or I would say assessment for learning and off learning was a continuous process. It just kept happening. But I would like to add, though you are not a big fan of board exams, that is how our education system is. And <laughs> grade, <laughs> yes, they would have lost grade nine 
people would have lost out on uh, their uh, not being graded on certain subjects before, which we couldn't have. We, we didn't have the time to take an assessment before we locked down. So we have gone online, even for a grade 10 AS and A levels, we have had monitored, timed examinations, complete examination happening online with the paper being shared with the children two minutes before the time of the examination starts and it's shared with the children through the email. And so much so that at the end of the examination, they scan the entire papers right in front of us. We have two invigilators there. They'll scan the papers right in front of us and email it to us. So we know that there is no gap. We know that it is foolproof. There's no malpractice. So yes, for that section, which is very important for us to have examination and assessment, we found our own ways of doing it. And we have been really successful. The teachers have also collected the papers and shared the marks and the gradings with them. And it is also going to help us when we have to give the grading and ranking to CIE for those children who missed out on the May June series. So assessments have continued. One you, the other. You, guys, you guys all know I've got a crystal ball, right? That I look into <laughs> and it shows me the future. My crystal ball tells me very clearly that this period of time is going to serve our children in a great way because parents, uh, board, boards, and everyone is going to relook and rethink what the purpose of learning is yeah. and how to go about it and how we should, how we should ensure that or, or, or perform the understanding of learning rather than examining or, or testing it in any way. So, yeah, I've, I've got great hopes that this, uh, this, you know, I'm an optimist that this time will bear, will bore well for the, for the children of India for the future. Certainly so looks like I'm into that. Madhu, what are the uh, things you feel the kids are missing in this virtual learning environment? And also, what are some of the things they are enjoying uh, learning virtually? Yes, a uh, lot of things are missing. Getting ready to come to school and, uh, you know, dressing up and then meeting friends, playing with them, eating with them. A lot of things they are missing. And we are trying to bridge, bridge the gap as far as possible. And what are they gaining? I have a long list, in fact. Uh, like, nice. uh, you know, uh, uh, for the first timers for EDC or nursery and EDC children, it's the uh, best of both the worlds. Mummy sitting next to them, Papa sitting next to them, teacher in the front, amusing with a lot of activities. So this this best of worlds they're getting, I mean, in this, uh, in this scenario, they can't get it uh, when actually they have physical school. So that was something for uh, year uh, one and two. And then uh, what I realized that, you know, they are very active participants in this, uh, in this this session like when we are talking about shape so children were told to go and get any sh i mean the shape which was introduced by the teacher so we're getting immediate feedback also they, they, they yeah. have understood the concept very well or and they're also getting going a little close to the nature which i really actually like that or believe in so going and touching and feeling those activities uh, those uh, items like we're talking about colors and they were told to go and get the red color fruits or vegetable so they're very going close to the nature, handling, touching, and feeling it. So as compared to the physical school, I would say it was very quick for us. We were doing in the school also with concrete objects, but it was very quick to understand for the, uh, to check the understanding of the children. And they're doing it very fast and very enthusiastically. And you know, they're doing it in their own environment. Yes. They're doing it and from their what own are they gaining? The, 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 uh, they are getting first time they are, uh, they are together. Yeah with mommy, daddy, and grandparents, grandmother. So they do a lot of uh, life skills which are developing now when they are all together. So, so uh, you know, I was, uh, I popped into uh, um, Billabong Jabalpur's uh, uh, virtual competition on storytelling. And I was yeah. just, even the, even the judges were online, the kids were online, and the kids literally did not miss it. It's almost like they were performing on a television screen so that they actually, up the ante um, on what the performance levels were. I mean, it looked like a real performance. Um, have you, you know, you, you've said that some children have preferred learning um, via device because those who are, who, you know, perhaps are a little shyer or feel a little bit more vulnerable in the presence of people. Have you seen anything else magical happen through online, um, you know, uh, through the online virtual um, performances that you would not perhaps see in a classroom? So the confidence level of the children has actually greatly increased. They, 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 and they also feel a lot, of, a lot in control. As uh, Madhu earlier said, they, knew, they know when to mute, when to, when to unmute, and you know, they feel they are in charge of the entire session, especially when they're leading the class. So when I walked into one of the classes, I actually saw a child 
preparing a PPT right in front of the entire class on this wow. phone. Within five minutes, the child was ready with the, with the subject that we were teaching and prepare the PPT and present it to the class there and then. So I think that these children, they are so used to using a device. They have a device at all times in their hands. They know how to explore it. They know much more than what we know. We had to learn. There, there's no learning for them. It's all natural. It comes very naturally to them being the today's generation. So I think these are the things that we have seen that device has really helped. The children are know, and at times, I will also say that if a teacher gets would, uh, would get stuck somewhere, the child would turn around and say, Miss, why don't you do this? Try this again, and you will definitely be able to show us the image which you're not able to show us. Or we are not able to hear you. There's a lag somewhere. And if you do this, this, is, might, I, this might do away with the lag that we are facing. So in fact, our children have taught us a lot in this virtual journey. And I think learning through the device comes easier to them. And the biggest realization, I would say, to add a little to what Madhu had said earlier was that uh, the, real, the biggest takeaway for the children as well is uh, that technology is not all about being on a social media platform. Technology is not only social media, it has so much more which has, mm. which is in store for you. There's a lot of scope for you in technology as far as your learning is concerned. So I think it's it's been, uh, everyone has realized a whole lot in this lockdown, which has had a lot of positives, I must say. Okay, so we're going to do two quick last questions and then we're going to open up the floor yeah. for the parents who are watching. Um, so I'll start, uh, Divya, can you ask, uh, you, you go ahead and I'll just... Yeah. Uh, Madhu, what is the kind of innovation you've seen in teaching aids or uh, learning tools that the teachers have come up for storytelling and concepts? I've seen a lot in our groups. Yes, yes. But yes. one or two which have really, really stood out and they've been exemplary, if you can just share that with us. Yes, I have a lot of pictures. If you want, I can show you some pictures. But uh, I would say that all the teachers, of, I mean, they have done their best. And a uh, lot of teaching aids were made out of the kitchen resources, whatever available with them. And everyone, everyone has a fantastic job. But I could uh, just want to share one or two pictures with you. Just a minute. Uh, I think there is somewhere. While she's getting that ready. Okay. Yes, we can just go ahead with the question sessions and I'll find out the pictures. Uh, Nikhil. Yes. I just want to ask you something. You know, I saw you do your performance of Understanding Online. Yes, Lena. Um, and usually, you know, all the parents come to uh, school to attend it. Um, yes. So that's a driving time to school. It's a driving time back. Um, and then it's the time that they spend in school. Um, I've seen, uh, um, you know, another principal do her... Uh, uh, PTA or PTMs online. PTMs, right? yes. Yeah, yeah. And the and parent know, the, orientations. Yeah. Parent yeah. orientations, yes. Yeah. So my first question is, do you think parents got as much out of it watching it virtually as in the school? And my second follow-up question to that is, what time do you think we can give back to students, we can give back to parents because of what we've learned to do virtually at this time? So if we talk about the performance of understanding, the experience was really very good. It was surreal. In fact, the parents were very appreciative. Uh, but somewhere, they were very appreciative of the kind of efforts that the children and the teachers had uh, put in. But somewhere I felt that if it comes to performance of understanding, it would be better if it is done in a physical environment where the parents get to see each and every child and clap for the child. That's a different feeling altogether. So it was really executed and much appreciated. But as far as other uh, programs are concerned in the school, I would tell you that we can give the parents time and uh, the students back their time as far as their parent orientations, their workshops, yeah. we, call them for, we call them for a lot of career uh, counseling and career guidance sessions. We call them for PTMs for which they have to travel for an hour and a half, wait for another, for just 10 minutes, they have to wait for another half an hour for them to be freed. So, and we can also have a lot of counseling sessions, which we usually have after school from three onwards. So and most of our parents are working parents in today's times any which way and they have to either excuse themselves for an hour or so from their office hours or they have to take a half day which again becomes very difficult for them. So in, uh, for and for them to come to school then does not become a very enjoyable experience though they get to see a lot of performances live it doesn't give them a very enjoyable experience because of all that they have had to go through. Maybe even fight it out with their boss because they have, uh, they're again taking a half day or a day off from the work. So all these counseling sessions with the special needs children, their 
career guidance counseling, the PTMs, orientations, each and every platform can be addressed virtually and it can happen very beautifully because I feel that is more of a personal connect even there because one-on-one -on -one is also possible. Each teacher can give uh, enough time to the parent online virtually because then we have enough time virtually. And if, as far as students are concerned, then we don't need to make call them on a Saturday for any extra class or any extra session. We don't need to ask them to stay back after school hours for any extra support and help. The children can go back home peacefully and they can even sit there at home and have the classes going on with the teacher and take the support from the subject teacher sitting from wherever they are. So it saves their time. It makes them feel that it, it's more comfortable. It breaks the routine as well. So I, I would say that the blended approach is something that we should actually, all of us would be looking for and yeah. incorporating even if there is no pandemic. I think this is one thought that we should not leave behind and we should continue with the same uh, energy and enthusiasm. Of course we will. So now we're gonna start taking some questions from uh, people who are watching. So the first question, classroom discussions increases students' interest and engagement and helps maintain students' focus. Asking questions increases confidence and instant answers can get students to different perspectives, think deeply and make connections. This is actually coming from our center head uh, for Kangaroo Kids, Khaja Guda. Okay. Um, um, Nika, do you want to take that? So uh, I would go back and reiterate all that we have said, been saying so far, right from the time the session has started with Divya also saying that she peeped into Prisha's class and she saw questions being raised and the teacher unmuting the child and the child given an opportunity to answer. So a lot of interaction has in fact happened. We, our classes have not been only teacher led. The children have had an opportunity to present to do their, uh, to lead the entire class. They have been had, they have had an opportunity to conduct quizzes, memory games, interact with the children. So the interaction level has been in fact, not if not same more than what we usually have in a classroom because of less noise level. We were able to control the noise and the interaction yeah. and, and the children in the Zoom feed, the Zoom has a feature of raising the, ha the hand, and, left hand side there's an icon where you have to raise the hand or you can even raise your hand virtually and tell the teacher that the question needs to be asked. The chat box in which you can write the question and the interaction happens, the teacher and the children answer. So that's been different. It's been different way of interacting, but the interaction has not stopped. And for the primary, let me tell you that our teachers have been kind enough and letting the last five, 10 minutes just for the children to let into interact with each other because that was a time when we didn't want to interfere at me time with each other. So we just let them be for the last 10 minutes of the session and let them sit together and talk together and interact with each other and share their experiences, the good and the bad. So I wouldn't, so I wouldn't say that interaction has uh, not decreased. A uh, parent asking, um, how, how, how does one motivate Arya to sit down and do her schoolwork? Every day is a battle of wits between her and Niti. Do you have any reading material on that subject? Or do you have any <laughs> advice on that subject? Anyone can speak. Uh, I would personally say it's better to condition the child that uh, yes, we are going to do this. So then, once we condition the child for the classwork or homework given by the teacher, so then they are pre, they know that they have to do it and then they sit together, little more motivation to the child. And maybe if the parent can talk to the teacher and find out what's the hurdle or what is the gap which the child is unable to do, maybe because of that gap, the child is not doing, uh, is not interested for the classwork. And if you're finding out the gap, uh, the child would be definitely uh, very positive to do it. I think also something I keep speaking about is, um, you know, uh, don't give transactional messages to your children, you know, that sit down at schoolwork time. Uh, make it more transformational where you're asking, how can I help you? Is there something that's causing you, uh, you know, that's not motivating you to, to do this? Is, this is, is there something we could do in the house to help you? I think all of those things will help. Yes, yes. There's another parent, Bharti Mahesh. We have observed some anxiety in kids as they could not go out to play and other restrictions. Uh, how could we reduce the anxiety? Simply by talking, <laughs> let me yeah. understand. I mean, this, so we this have is had a we special, have. Uh, yes, we have had a special mm -hmm. needs department, the entire CUNW team conducting life skill sessions and counseling sessions. And the counseling sessions have been nothing but to develop their growth mindset, to develop their critical thinking and problem solving skills, to make them think beyond uh, the circumstances and see 
what resources are available at home that they can make the best use of. So these are the counseling sessions that we have had, we have had and we are continuing to have on a regular basis. And children, when they are given an opportunity to talk, to speak out their fears without being and the anxieties, without the fear of being judged in any which way, I think being heard is a, is a very important thing. And even in this time, being heard and not being taken for granted, because here we all of us are talking about how it is affecting us as teachers, as parents, and as adults, and groceries, groceries not available, vegetable is, market is closed. But nowhere I'm talking about how a child is being affected because of the lockdown. What can we do to make the child uh, feel more comfortable just because a child is quiet and does not voice uh, out the emotions doesn't mean that the child is not affected. So I think just talking about it very openly should be a very good way of dealing with this situation. Okay, so I'm going to take just one last question, Shilpa Jaiswal. Uh, everything is fine, but let me say, what about the screen time with children at home in lockdown? The only entertainment is TV, study too on TV. How do we control? Please recommend. Let's all give our comments. Yeah, we can replace, uh, like we can have a proportionate blend of it. We can play along with the child at home. A lot of things are there to play along with them, talk to them, occupy them for gardening, watering the plant, and uh, so help your grandpa, grandpa, grandma. In fact, we have started uh, developing a skill kind of in early primary wherein they are supposed to fold their clothes. They have to learn how to fold their clothes, how to help their mom. So there are a lot of activities wherein uh, we can engage them, peeling uh, peas and uh, giving, the, you know, plucking those leaves, whatever available at home. We can engage them creatively through various things available. So, so my advice is this for you guys to sit down as a family and uh, negotiate uh, the time that everyone, but when when you sit down with the family everyone has to be on the same page it's not that you know you as a mom can uh, spend all your time working on the computer and then doing netflix and and then you know putting barriers and barricades and time limits uh, for the children so i think if you guys all sit down together as a community family and say um, as you know what are the rules we should uh, put put around this and uh, if if you can excite children to understand why um, so it's not just that you know because i'm saying so but you know uh, an excess of screen time may take us away from doing other things so what are the other things that we should be doing as well and then you know all of you timetable your time and you all have equal almost equal amount of time on on um, on digital devices any extra yeah. advice from me? This is our last question. Any extra advice from Nikhat or Divya? No, I think that's right. They need to divide. Share yes. responsibilities at home, share screen time, have family time also. Yeah. And I would like to just end with saying that screen time is always a menace. I mean, even earlier on, we had parents, uh, you know, coming, uh, complaining to us that the child has been, uh, you, been on a mobile the entire day after the child comes back from school or is on a PSP or PS4 and constantly playing games. So this is a more constructive screen time and the rest of the time that the parent now gets. Otherwise, the parent used to come back home in the evening tired, not, more, not having enough energy and time left to spend time with the children. I think that time can be now compensated with me time with and bonding time, as Lena said. And the rest of the screen time still remains, which is more constructive. And there's also a break in the screen time there because of the dance at, uh, activity that is happening, the physical ex uh, sessions that are going on, the yoga sessions that are going on. We also have guitar and piano and music and tabla, all that happening virtually. So this, though being screen time, is a very different and very engaging and uh, constructive to your screen time. Yeah, what you're trying to say, the brain may not process the screen time the same way as it processes screen time, uh, just uh, maybe passively. Just, you mean passive amounts yeah. of. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you all very much. Uh, Nikat, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madhu. Thank you, Nikat. Thank you, thank you Divya. Madhu. Thank you, Madhu. Thank you. Madhu, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lina. Thank you, Lina. Thank you, Divya. Virtual vocab. Virtual vocab. <laughs> thank you, Divya. Bye. Thank you. Take and care. Thank you, all your parents out there, uh, teachers who. who, who who sort of um, connected with us through this time. It's been a very exciting time that I've not had to uh, sit all by myself and speak to you <laughs> and three beautiful women with me uh, to share this platform. So thank you all very much once again for joining us. Thank See you for you giving the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you next Wednesday, same time, same place for our next Facebook Live. Bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye. you.
बाय बाय